update, which I promised some months, uh, some weeks ago, uh, and it's been just over a, a, a three or four weeks that I expected. Um, the video has actually been filmed over the course of three weeks, uh, interspersed by a trip to Paris, and then to the beauty of Birmingham and the NEC and the Wally Model Railway Exhibition, all of which I talk about in the in the video you're about to see. It uh, comes in a couple of sections. The first one, which was recorded furthest to go, was the, me starting to do the work around uh, building the raised section to the, to the right of the layout. And then you'll see it a bit further developed. And then I talk a bit about the uh, plans that I've got for the layout over the next two or three months, including the various purchases that I made at uh, Wally. Um, and at the end, you may just see a streak arrive in Elmham. Those of you that are aficionados of uh, steam engines will have an idea of what that may mean, but you will see. And there are trains running towards the end of the uh, of the update. So I hope you enjoy the update, um, and uh, I'll speak to you in just a moment. Uh, as I said in the introduction, what I'm what I'm trying to do now is show you how I'm going about constructing this top level, um, and we'll see by the end of it how, uh, how well it comes out. But just to show you where I've got to so far, um, in the previous video I'd used the uh, black plasterboard. Uh, this, is a, this is an offcut of it, which I've been speaking about before. It comes in A4 sheets. I mean that's actually a spacer for the roading. But you can see it's just um, sort of filled in the centre with, with card on either side. And it's quite robust, um, but it is card on either side. And one of the things I discovered, um, you'll remember from the previous video, that I, this is essentially six A4 sheets put, put together with a, a frame underneath. Um, and then I sealed it uh, using uh, a dilute solution of PVA. And I forgot the card when it gets wet bends, which this did. Um, and I hadn't put a sufficiently strong frame underneath to stop it from bending. And I thought I'd lost it completely, but actually, um, I then painted it with a, um, I can't remember what colour I painted it. It's a little match pot that I got from B&Q, which is, if I get hold of it, Dark Horse. Very useful, these little match pots. They don't cost much, and you can cover an awful lot of ground. It's just a 50 millilitre, um, which is quite a nice, neutral, dark, sort of browny, grey colour, which will, which will go fine. Um, so I thought I was going to have to do it all again, but actually a little bit of brute force and ignorance was able, and I was able to bend it back into shape. But note for the future that if you're going to put anything wet on these things, you need a really good frame underneath. It's a bit like, I suppose, MDF uh, for baseboards, which has to be very, very well braced underneath to stop it from warping. Um, but as you can see, I've done... Um, quite a bit more from what was on the last video, so I'll just take you through what I've done so far. Uh, this white stuff here is the Woodland Scenic Shaper Sheet. Um, and what I can do is lift this off, because that's how it's built to be done. Um, and if I turn this around so I can see what you're seeing, that's better. Um, this is just, it's got an aluminium back. If I show you on this side, you can probably see it it's glinting in the sunlight. Uh, and a, a, a foam, um, a light gauze on top, which is, and the beauty of that is you're able to shape it to the shape that you want it to be. What next needs to be done with this is covered either with the um, plaster, that uh, the shaper sheet plaster that uh, Woodland Scenic sells, which I've got some, and you mix up and just cover it over to make a hard shell. Uh, or uh, plaster cloth, and I'm, I'll see which one I, I prefer. But once that's done, at the moment it's tacked on at the top using track pins. I don't know if you can see any of the black. I can learn to do this back to front. I'm not sure you can see black track pins. But there's just half a dozen track pins holding it in along the edge of the board. And it does what I want it to do, because as you remember, the whole idea of this is that I'll be able to lift this off to get access to the top end of the track. But at the moment, you can see where I braced it underneath and I hadn't braced it enough. It really needed to be much stronger to stop it from warping. But it's not the end of the world. And actually, <laughs> you know, make it, take advantage of everything. It gives me a slight contour on the board, 
which means it's not dead flat, so maybe that will, get, that will add to the interest. I'll just move this out of the way. The end section here, you'll recall that I showed you the um, three row tunnel entrance. And again, this is just this plasterboard as you can see on the inside now. That's just the two pieces of plasterboard. That of course uh, is what the, the top rests on and it lines up with the, with the wood here. Uh, just braced in the corner to make sure this sits square. Uh, as you can see there's a piece of wall here with some Metcalf card. Hello Metcalf, there's the Metcalf card. And then I just covered the outside with Metcalf card and put two buttresses on. And then more of the strip that I used, um, just the white strip, but I'm not putting any paper around this time. I've just, I'm not sure again if you'll, if you'll let me know whether you can see I come in close enough. There you go. Um, and then I've just scored down using a little uh, junior hacksaw to give me the, the wall tops. So that sits on there quite nicely. And that provides the end at this end and just very simply, that's not yet firmly fixed in, uh, but once it's, um, and obviously there's clearance for the trains to go by. The uh, tunnel entrances for the other side is, has been done, let's move that way. Uh, and that, I, I've not yet quite fixed how I'm going to fix that in, but that butts up against the wall there, so that, that will fit in there. Um, and there is still some gaps between the board top and the and the front, but those are being filled in as I as I build it in. So that's what we've got at the moment, and that sits in there quite happily. It marries up pretty well on this side, less so that side, but I'm not too troubled. That I know I've deliberately left because the station will sit here with a. Um, stairs going down to the platform and how I fill that in I'll, I'll determine a bit nearer the time. It's possible that I'll, I'll build out over there. Over here at this end where there's a gap that's fairly straightforward because I should put some plaster cloth that sort of hangs loosely and then I'll put various um, scenic material to look like overhanging branches and stuff and that will close that gap quite happily. I'm not too troubled by that. And if needs be, I can always build a bit more on, on, on top. But that's where we've got to so far. Um, tomorrow now, I'll put the plaster cloth on. Um, and the church is going to live up here, I've decided. Um, it will go like that, because then that will be facing due east, as it should, of course. Uh, and we can have a graveyard here. The station will be there with a the road coming out probably for some trees to make it look as though it comes from somewhere else and probably a few cottages to be near just up on the hill. So that's where we are so far um, and in the next section hopefully you'll see it with plaster cloth on. I won't necessarily have completed all the scenic stuff because some of that's got to be bought at Worley but this is just to show you it in, mo in progress rather than just here it is done and finished. Okay so I'll see you, see you again in a bit once we've put some plaster cloth on and possibly painted it in. Uh, well, here we are, uh, having added the... Uh, I eventually decided to use plaster cloth uh, over the shape of sheet and then coloured it with some uh, enamels, uh, enamels, acrylic paints. Just a standard acrylic paint set mixed up something that approximated uh, the earthy colour that I wanted for the, 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 the cliff edge, essentially. Um, and we're now actually several weeks after the first piece because I ran out of time to complete the, the video before we went away on holiday to Paris and then Worley. Uh, and this is now being recorded on the 28th yes, of November. Um, but it's, I, the beauty is I've been away for a couple of weeks and I've come back and I'm, I'm really quite happy with the, the general look. The thing that I now need to do is start adding some scenic materials. The plaster cloth that I used um, 
has not actually gone as smooth as I'd like it to be. So I'll be interested to see when, whether I may need to put another layer of plaster cloth, which would be a shame because it all need to be painted again. But equally, it may well be that once I start putting scenic materials on, it will, it will all blend nicely. But I'm generally happy with the shape that it gives me there. Uh, and uh, so that should, be, that should be quite good. Uh, two corrections, having looked at the previous clip before I, I recorded this one. I will insist on calling foam board plasterboard. It is not plasterboard, it is foam board. Uh, it's expanded polystyrene foam in between the two sheets of, of paper, not uh, plaster. Uh, and also, the more observant of you will have noticed, uh, I got this the right way around, I'm not entirely sure I have, uh, will have noticed that uh, that the church, when I had it on last time round, was indeed facing the wrong way around. So it has moved now through 300, uh, 180 degrees, so that the uh, altar is facing to the east and not to the west as I had it before. But that's how the church is going to be, that's where it's going to be positioned up there. Um, the side wall and the uh, double tunnel portals at, on the other side have all now just been uh, fixed into position um, by the simple expedient of a bit of PVA. That seems to have done the job perfectly well. Uh, and it's still the case, coming back and looking at this, that I think I can get round the slight warping of the, of the boards that I spoke about in the previous uh, session. Um, and that actually, as I put the scenic materials on, that will allow me to fill things, particularly building the uh, station for the far end where it comes down onto uh, what will be Greyhaven's platform, uh, which you can see just over here. If I come in a little, oh look, I, got, <laughs> I did it the right way first time. So in that corner there, there's a platform, there's a, a set of steps that are going to need to come down onto that platform, which will be a bit closer to the tunnel portal. Um, that will, and a building that will be up on the bridge. So all of that, I think, will help me fill that whole section in. So generally speaking, although that's not gone entirely according to plan, um, I'm generally content with how that's, that's turning out. Um, but if the worst comes to the worst, I'll just have to start again from scratch and use wood rather than the plasterboard. Um, there's no great cost involved in what I've done there, uh, nor would there be any great cost involved in, in putting it right. But let's see if we can, we can make something of this. Um, that's about as far as it's going to go with this. The, the next time that you come to see this, I hope I'll have actually put some scenic materials on and have started marking out uh, what's going to go up there, which isn't that much. It isn't that much. Um, one of the useful things when I was at Worley was I had the opportunity to go to the Pico stand and, and uh, see how to use a static grass applicator and got a lot of useful advice about how you build the layers up. So I'll be giving that a go in the next few days. Um, but the next part of the video is to go on to um, what are the plans for the next couple of months, I imagine. Actually, the various things that I, I acquired at Worley um, to enable me to go and do the next, uh, next section. So I'll just get a few things set out in front here uh, and then I'll come back. Okay, well what you see before you is uh, the things that are going to keep me going and busy uh, for the next couple of months, I think. Um, my plan is to uh, keep concentrate on the right-hand side of the, uh, of the layout um, because there's a lot of work that needs to be done at this side uh, and I'm now in the position where seriously I can get on with doing some of the, some of the scenic stuff. So uh, I will want to start doing some ballasting, though that probably will be till into the new year because um, I've got some other things I can, I can do before that. What you see in front of you, the pyramid of Dapol boxes, uh, eight of those were intended purchases from Worley. That is a, a, a rake of streaks, uh, of um, uh, teak coaches. As you may recall, the platform was designed to take an engine with a rake of eight coaches, that's what I, that's the platform where the top is intended to do. Um, when I was there, uh, I was there for two days at Worley. I, if you've not been to Worley, the National Exhibition Centre, the National um, Worley Model Rail Exhibition, strictly, um, it's the single biggest I think in in the UK. 
90 layouts on display, equally as many um, trade stands. And Dapol had an A4, a mallard in, in early BR, green, um, and at 90 pounds, you can't really say no, so I didn't. Uh, and so that sits atop that rake of coaches. And my aim later today, uh, when I finished uh, doing this bit, uh, is to get that running so that we can have a running session at the end with, a, uh, I suspect, an A3 pulling uh, a rake of custard and cream Hawksworths and uh, the streak leading the teaks around in the opposite direction because I think we re this video needs trains running in every video from now on. Uh, so that's the aim. Um, uh, so I hope, if all goes well, that this video can be put up a bit later today. But obviously I've got to run Mallard in yet half an hour either way So and it's not had its chip fitted so that's the next immediate thing so we'll, uh, we'll see where that goes. Um, I think I mentioned in the previous section that I was able to talk to the people at Pico about how to use the uh, static grass applicator that I got some time ago. Um, they, they couldn't have been more helpful in showing me how to do the layering and giving advice on the right lengths of static grass to be using for engage. Uh, so a couple of bags of static grass uh, 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 added to something I already had. Um, got the basing glue for sticking the, gr the grass down and the spray so I can layer. Uh, just next to that in the box is the deluxe um, ballast magic. Um, living in a flat as I do and this being in one of our rooms, the extent to which I can do anything that's sort of messy uh, and which might damage things is somewhat limited. So I rather like the idea of the ballast magic. If you've not seen it, go on to the deluxe website, which uses much less water than I know is used for the 50-50 the, the solution of water and PVA together with a drop of um, uh, washing up liquid to help uh, break surface tension. So I'm going to give that a go for the ballasting which I've mentioned and I want to try and ballast under the tunnel portals uh, and up the back the incline as, it, as the, the line moves up uh, towards uh, High Elven and then when I'm feeling really strong I might start having a go at ballasting the front section of the line here which as you can see is loads of points. Now that's going to take me a little while uh, to summon the, cur the courage to have a go at doing that because one set of stuck points would be fatal. Uh, so I need to be, uh, be sure that I can do it on a straight and get it to work. Although one of the good things of the ballast magic is that if you get it wrong, one of the things with it is you just w wet it again and you can get all the stuff back up. But I have a feeling that certainly the uh, double slips would be pretty unforgiving if you managed to gunge any part of them up. And I, they, that really would be... Um, a time for a sit down and a cry if any of those got stuck. Uh, so that's there. The other project which will be the subject of a specific video uh, is this. That is the Earl of Dunraven which I mentioned I purchased uh, in my last video and sitting in front of it now is the on the right hand side the decoder, the, eight, the next 18 decoder uh, which has been loaded with the, the Farish Castle sounds. Um, or the castle sounds of a GWR castle rather, and to the left in, in its in, uh, protective case is the tiny little speaker, all of which go into the tender of the uh, castle. Uh, Graham Farish say it is very simple to fit. There are there's two places which need to be soldered on the board that sits inside the, the castle. Those two wires go to the speaker and the speaker needs to have them soldered on. You attach the next decoder and away you go, it says. Well, we'll see, because my intention is for the next video uh, is just to video, video me doing that. Uh, as much from one of the things that I always said I was doing these videos for, anyone coming new to this hobby and thinking how hard is this, it's much easier to see it done than it is um, uh, to just hear about it. So I intend to give that a go. At the back here, the little tins of paint are the paints that I need to be able to paint up the coaling stage, which was a kit I showed, um, million yard sidings, I think they're called. Um, but that is also a project that I'll be doing because the white card um, it just gives the broad dimensions of the coaling stage once it's finished, that's where it will sit. 
Uh, and I've mentioned that the incline up to it is not prototypical. It really should have a much longer incline going up to it. But I don't really, I don't intend to be running trains up and down there. That's going to be really very much a scenic thing. So I can afford a little bit of fork shortening and it's not prototypical. So you don't need to tell me. Um, and as I said, I'm going to be doing the scenic area up here, uh, which needs some grass attached to that uh, rock face and, and more work to that. That is not the finished rock face, but at least it gives me a, an idea of the shape. Uh, and at the back there, I need to complete the station building and um, footbridge that will take people down onto a, a single platform uh, and build the platform and do the whole of that area. So there's, there's plenty to keep me going over the next couple of months. So I'm going to end uh, this, this bit here. The next bit, I think, uh, all being well, should be uh, the streak with its rake of teak coaches um, with uh, Benjamin's button, probably, I think, um, doing sterling service going the opposite way uh, with a row of Hawksworths. So let's see where we get to. Oh, yes, one thing I have forgotten, which I've just like, you know, nipped over, that little set of lights uh, that's down there is to enable me to light part of the station and I do want to finish the station building, including putting in the uh, shelving units that you may remember from several videos ago, tiny little shelving units that I got from Scale Model Scenery. There's more of those to be built and it was my intention always that the parcels office would be lit on the station. And I've got enough lights there to light some of the buildings. I don't intend to have them all lit because otherwise um, it will look a bit odd, but I think it would be quite nice to have one or two of the houses lit and perhaps another light somewhere in the station. So we'll see how those go uh, to enable me to complete that. So that's enough for now. I look forward to speaking to you again um, and perhaps in a couple of weeks' time once I've summoned the coverage to actually uh, fit sound to the Earl of Dunraven. And I hope you enjoy the short running session that will follow this video. Uh, until I speak to you again. If you've liked the video, please do say you've liked it and, uh, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And I look forward to speaking to you again in a while. Until then, bye-bye.